Well, if you saw the race, you saw that today's race was kind of a stinker. But I'm going to let you know who got dumped in turn one. Hello everyone, my name is Kyle aka Racing Boy Short and this is my channel where I talk NASCAR, NASCAR news and everything NASCAR. So the NASCAR Cup Series took their one trip to the Tricky Triangle Pocono Raceway, a race I'd say used to be one of the most boring, not fun, kind of stinker sort of races throughout the year, but over the last couple of seasons ever since they introduced the next gen car i feel like the racing has really improved at pocono raceway and unfortunately i'd say today it went back to classic pocono we didn't see too much passing out there today it was really all about track position and having that clean air we saw it multiple times throughout the day drivers taking no tires, two tires, four tires. It really didn't matter how many tires you took. It just mattered on where you were in the lineup. Let's get to this event here, though. The early portion of this race, it was pretty obvious that the Toyotas were going to be very strong. Ty Gibbs had a great start to the race. Overall, had a pretty good day. The number 54 up until he actually lost an engine. I'm not exactly sure what went what went wrong here but you saw this light brown liquid potentially the water mixing with the oil coming out of the tailpipes very unfortunate for ty still looking for that first win you also saw martin truex jr who a lot of people in the garage were labeling as the fastest driver in pocono this weekend and like i said because of that track position i don't think we were ever able to see how fast some of these cars were unless they got out front. And then, of course, you had Denny Hamlin, and Denny Hamlin is probably the greatest driver to ever race at Pocono. He is so great at this racetrack. His rookie season, he swept both the races at Pocono back when they had two races, and we knew he was going to be a threat for the win as well. But very early on in this race as well, we quickly found out that this was going to be a very, very strategic race. As we had a couple of early cautions in the race, it kind of put everybody on a different strategy throughout the day. Some drivers decided to stay out those first two big cautions. There was one on lap 15 and one around lap 30 for the stage break. Then you had some drivers who just got gas at lap 15, like Kyle Busch. Kyle Busch was trying to get track position. He just got gas at lap 15, did not take any tires. He knew early on tires weren't going to mean much. So according to me, very early on in this race, the winner of this race was going to be because of their crew chief and the calls they make throughout the day pending strategy when it comes to tires, when it comes to fuel. Because it seems like every time we come to Pocono Raceway, it seems to be a fuel event fuel strategy comes into play, and it almost did at the end of this event. We'll get to that in a little bit. Overall, I'd say this was a fairly clean race. For the most part, you had the Toyota drivers up there leading. You had Hamlin leading some laps. Ty Gibbs, like I mentioned, led early. Truex led a little bit. It was mainly them dominating a good portion of this race while Everybody was pretty much just in a line. You would see those big gaps in between drivers. It was just so hard to make passes or even find speed for a lot of these drivers, which is very, very unfortunate to see at Pocono, especially since the last couple of years. The racing has really improved, and then this year it's just, like I said, there's not really any excitement out there. At the very end, I think it got... A little exciting but it wasn't good racing it was because everybody was just fighting so hard on these restarts the restarts were crazy all day in this event everybody knew on the restarts that's where you're going to have your opportunity to make passes and get positions because you weren't going to get it 
on the green flag runs unless you just had an amazing car. It didn't matter if the driver in front of you had 15 or maybe even 30 lap older tires that wasn't really going to make a difference. It was really just about if you're that much faster than the guy in front of you, you might have a chance to make a pass. But even in that case, we didn't we didn't see it throughout the day. I'd say on that last last run of the race, the, those last, I don't know how many laps it was, that very last run of the race when we got to the finish, the only position in the top 15, I was paying attention. The only spot in the top 15 I saw change hands was Denny Hamlin moving up to second and Bowman falling back to third. That exchange of positions was the only thing I saw at the very end of this race. It was very disappointing to see, but very good on Ryan Blaney. Ryan Blaney did end up winning this race. I haven't even, I don't think I've even mentioned him this video because there wasn't really that many cars that really stood out. Like I said, those couple of Toyota drivers, I'd say, stood out a little bit, but Byron, I guess, too. Byron was pretty fast, Chase Elliott. But it was just all about track position all day and about what the crew chief made as a decision. And Jonathan Hassler, the crew chief of Ryan Blaney, made the best calls he could today. The number 12 crew won Blaney this race. Blaney, I'd say, was running top 10, top 5, most of the event. It's not like he was slow or anything. It just really was dependent on track position, on how you were going to do in this event. And they called the strategy right. The number 12 crew and the number 12 of Ryan Blaney able to get to victory lane for the second time this season. Ford have really put it on the last two months after having a really, really bad start to the season. All right, now that we got the actual race out of the way. Let's get to those final couple of restarts before we had that long run. And we're going to talk about one very in particular incident while we're talking about this. I mentioned earlier on, everybody was fighting really hard on the restarts because that's the only way they were really able to make any positions up. And we really saw that at the end of this race. I think it was maybe... I think they had like three straight cautions on lap number one, I think. Three straight, maybe on lap number one, lap number two. Very Three very quick yellows back to back to back. These drivers were just trying to get everything they could at the end of this race, trying to get every position they could because some of these drivers were on way different strategies that had a lot, that seemed to have had a lot of speed, like a Kyle Larson. Kyle Larson... I felt like had a pretty quick car. Like I said, it was so hard to tell because of the track position. But him getting on a different strategy at the end of this race, he was running around 15th. So at the end of this race, you saw a lot of cautions because of these restarts. And one of these cautions is the one we're going to be talking about involving Kyle Busch and Corey LaJoy. The one incident we're going to be talking about in particular, during these caution flags, involved Corey LaJoy and Kyle Busch. I'd say this has been the big talking point of the race at Pocono, so you've probably already seen the replay, but I'm going to pull it up anyway. As you see right here, it looks like Kyle Busch throws a block on Corey LaJoy, forcing LaJoy to go to the bottom lane. And it looks like to me here that LaJoy just hooks a right, and turns Kyle Busch, essentially dumping him into the grass, sending him up into the racetrack, into a bunch of cars, taking out a lot of drivers. It just kind of looked like to me that Corey LaJoy was going bowling right there, in my opinion. That was awful to see. And then hearing what what him and Ryan Sparks and maybe even his spotter, I, I'm getting the voices a little bit confused. I can definitely point out Corey LaJoy's vo voice out of the voices that we heard on the radio. In case you didn't hear what exactly was mentioned on the radio after this incident, I'm going to play that real quick. Take a listen. You all good there? Uh, I think so. Check the note. He hooked himself. Yeah, f I ain't worried about him. It's all about us. Focus forward here. Yeah, you let him have it the first time. Second time, he got what he deserved. All good. And hearing something like that, that doesn't tell me for sure it was intentional, but 
doesn't look good. I'd say it was, uh, if I had to say it was intentional or not intentional, I'd probably say it was intentional. It maybe wasn't his, his intent to recommend all those cars and have such a gnarly incident like it was, but he definitely meant to do something to Kyle Busch, and that was pretty clear right there. And I really hated Corey, I really hated Corey LaJoy's interview too. And this is unfortunate because I consider myself a huge fan of LaJoy. I've talked about how much I like LaJoy on this channel. I even talked about him just a couple of days ago when they were, when they were announcing Rodney was going to be his new crew chief. I really like LaJoy, and I've been seeing these silly moves that he has been making lately. And then today, to have have my driver essentially caught up in what, I, what I'd what i say was an, an intentional wreck near the end of this race, taking out not just Kyle Busch, but multiple cars, and then hear the chatter on the radio. I said it on Twitter at the time, and I'll say it again now, and I I don't think I've said this in quite a while for anybody, but I, I'd say they should have parked him. I think the last time I said that about anybody was when Elliott wrecked Hamlin at Charlotte. And I know it wasn't a right hook, but we all know how dangerous turn one is. We've had so many bad accidents there. I personally would have parked them right then and there because it looked intentional to me. I haven't seen no SMT data or anything, so I could be wrong. I could potentially be wrong about it being intentional somehow, but every camera angle I've seen, whether it's the onboard or from the grandstands or from way high up or from wherever I've seen a camera angle. It looks like to me that LaJoy just hooks it right and takes out Kyle Busch. Maybe he was thinking Kyle Busch was clear of him, but I, I don't think that was the case e either. I just, like I said, I just think he hooked him and he even tried to blame Kyle Busch for it, saying that Kyle Busch wrecked himself, that he blocked him a second time. Like, I, I, like I said, I really hated Corey LaJoy's interview. He just made it even worse for himself. I'm not sure if there will be any penalty for this or not. I'm not going to say for sure. Personally, I'd say give him a fine and maybe met him, make him sit out a race. Other than that, I don't think he should get anything else. One race suspension, maybe a $75,000 fine or a $50,000 fine, something like that. But at the same time, I would not be surprised at all if there isn't a penalty because Corey LaJoy hasn't come out flat out and said that he wrecked Kyle Busch intentionally. And it was, like I said, it was pretty close. There could be a very slim, I highly, highly doubt it, but there could be a very slim possibility that for some odd reason, Corey LaJoy thought Kyle Busch was clear. I don't believe in that. But maybe NASCAR does, so we'll have to see if there is any, any penalties in the upcoming week. But give me all your thoughts down below about the race at Pocono. Were you disappointed in the racing like I was? I wasn't expecting any sort of barn burner or anything, but I was expecting something like we've had in the last couple of years where we've had the strategy, but plus some actual good racing where it's not 100% about clean air and track position, and that's what today was. It was a long conga line, or they were wrecking. And also, give me your thoughts about the incident between Corey LaJoy and Kyle Busch. Do you think it was an intentional wreck? Do you also think that Corey LaJoy is going to be suspended? I honestly think he probably won't be suspended, but I think he should be suspended, and I think that he did intentionally wreck. Kyle Busch, but give me your thoughts down below on what you thought of the race and the situation between Rowdy and LaJoy. Also, if you haven't already, I would appreciate you subscribing to the channel. I do multiple NASCAR videos throughout the week, but that'll do it for me. Thanks for watching. My name is Kyle, aka Racing Boy Short, saying peace.